Thank you. Um, Drew Deaton, VIPAR. Uh, we did partner with the uh, University of Alabama at Birmingham. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. It's late in the day. So I'm going to go through a couple slides, and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll show a couple videos. Um, before we go too far, next slide, please. Um, we started out in healthcare. Up, oh, clicker. Uh, got it. Here? Check. OK. Now we're in gear. So we started out in healthcare. My co-founder is a neurosurgeon. And many of our early work was in the operating room. Um, probably a similar number of cases as Shafi has had, and some of the same exact things. So I won't reiterate the regulatory concerns, the process, the measurement, and all the rest. Um, but what we found as we were in the operating room, that the service professionals, the staff that are from the medical device companies, and from those that have to maintain the equipment and the kits, they said, if I had that, if I had the ability to be there remotely whenever there might be a problem, if I could reach in, I wouldn't have to drive as far to fix or be present in the case that's three hours away or 3,000 miles away. So we were led into the field service space, which feels like home now here uh, at the conference this week. So um, we started off in the operating room. I'm going to give you a couple slides of where we ended up, and then I'm going to come back and finish in healthcare. Um, that's an orthopedic surgeon reaching in, training a third-year resident how to do a shoulder repair, orthoscopic shoulder repair, cut to close, and so he would use his hands to reach in and guide. So that's what makes us unique. Um, my co-founder filed the patents back in 2006 and 7 that are now issued around merging reality in real time. So those hands reaching in are his hands reaching in in real time. It can be from anywhere in the world, and you'll see a little bit more about that in a minute. And we, we have our own mobile app, which is a platform and available app store. Um, you can join the other 10,000 plus users if you would like. So now the problem that we let, were led to was how do you fix that? And so we've been doing fixing that for a couple of years. And the, the fixing that, um, I mean, it would be lovely if we had every situation, every solution mapped in the right software where you could have somebody augmentedly um, show the solution without having a real person there. However, in the world of being simple first, we allow the person to reach in. So the expert reaches in and shows it in real time. So what that looks like is you can be anywhere in the world and you can reach in and fix. The client can instantly virtually help. Back to the operating room. Yeah, we used that on the left. We weren't real happy about it. And we don't use it anymore. But whenever we were proving it out, we, we gave that surgeon the ability to, to reach in. So it's time to get healthcare. So this is a brain surgery that we're getting ready to look at. So this is a, this is a neurosurgical trauma. My co-founder, Dr. Bart Guthrie, is down on the bottom right. So you'll get to see what it looks like whenever he reaches in. Now this is the real in the screen at the top. Gloved hands are a dead giveaway in the surgical space. And then there's the virtual, which is actually really attached to him in the bottom right hand picture. But again, you had to look away. So it was before the days of the head mounted VR. We started doing this. Again, he started doing this in seven and eight and you know, really formalized it in 2009. And so this case was in 12. So this was before head mounted VR. Um, and, and so we were doing it look away. Let's go, let's go see if you can play the video, Tom. Is that all right? This is the neurotrauma video. It's really not about the audio. And we'll see. So I mean, the AV people at an AR conference are they're miracle workers. I mean, just think about what they're trying to do. They're trying to show all this mixed media, right video, and it's moving. Perfect. So you're looking into OR 511. Dr. Guthrie is in his suite remotely. And you can see what it looks like in the screen that they, had, that they were able to see him reach in. Not only point out the anatomy, but actually make the, well, what if you take this piece out? Now, a unique piece about trauma is you don't know exactly what it's going to be. It's, how, it's hard to map out a trauma in the amount of time it takes to just do the case. But you still need the expertise. Do you say, do you take this piece out? Do you take that piece out? So you can, of course, see Dr. Guthrie's real hand down at the bottom right. So you did get to do a little brain surgery this week. All right. Um, 
it goes on. There's even the uh, augmented, well, there's even CGI that, you know, you can put on top of it, but we all know what that looks like. So you can stop and back to slides. Perfect. Now, that led us, whenever Google Glass came out, right? You know, you're all thinking it. It was awesome, and it is. And so we did too. We're like, let's, let's throw this out there. So we were the second case. Next slide. Let's see if we can go to it. And we even got on CBS News. It was cool. Christmas Day, 2013. So we did the case in October. And yeah, they needed something cool to play on Christmas. And so we got to watch it. It was awesome. And now I'll tell you, it was about one of the most stressful days. Marcus, was that not a stressful day? Um, that, I mean, you're doing something like this. Is this actually going to fly? I mean, is it going to work? So one more slide and then we'll play the video, but not yet. All right. This tells you how things are working. Does everybody see Google, Apple, and Microsoft all represented within three inches of that guy's face? That might be Skype that he's talking into to make it work. And that is definitely an iPod touch, I think, at the time. So we were making it work, and it did. So I'll back up one slide. So we were actually able to reach in remotely from Atlanta into the case in Birmingham. So it was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty amazing. Um, we were excited about it, and so, but I'll tell you what really kind of got me was the surgeon who doesn't know, you know, he, this is compared to whatever he normally uses, and he said, you know, there's just some limitations. And I was like, no way, come on. I mean, this is the coolest thing ever. And he wrote up a paper, and he published it, and I was a little frustrated at that at the time. But it turned out it was right. And so, I mean, you know, next generations of things, they always get better. So we're excited about what that looks like. Uh, pl you can play a little bit and kind of see, um, see what the actual case looked like. Now, there's audio with this one. UAB with did a great job. In Atlanta. They are looking over some images prior to Ponce performing a shoulder surgery in Birmingham. That extra hand belongs to the Atlanta doctor, Pani Dantaluri. It's telemedicine with a twist. It's real time, real life right there, as opposed to a normal Skype or normal video conference call, which is just back and forth dialogue, but it's not really interactive. And it's right there in the operating room, using a virtual reality technology developed at UAB called a Vipar, along with Google Glass. The camera in the Google Glass sends an image of the surgical field to Dantaluri's so computer Brett, in Atlanta. Like, he uh, sees what Ponce sees, and Vipar to allows to him to reach into the so virtual right field in real time. In turn, Ponce sees Dantaluri's hands and instruments in his Google Glass heads-up display. A surgeon, a remote surgeon, is able to put his hands or her hands into the surgical field and provide assistance to point out different structures the anatomy, the placement of retractors. So it's, it's a safety net to improve patient care by having that assistance from an expert who's not in the room. Ponce and Dantaluri teamed up for this first ever Vipar Google Glass operation. It's a good way to teach surgical residents or allow a veteran surgeon like Ponce to serve as a mentor. When you have residents graduate or an attending who's on staff somewhere else, is learning a new procedure that's good. and would want that's probably help good. or assistance We're good on for the that. first all... two, three, four. So the, it's, it's out there, you can take a look at it. Now what's interesting is we moved our entire platform completely to be mobile. So that big base station-y type thing that I showed you in the picture and the thing that Pontelori was reaching under has now been reduced down to your normal iPad. So iPad, iPhone, Android device, whatever you've got today, it just makes sense because that's what we have. So it puts it in two billion hands. Um, Neat now is to see without us saying, come on, let's do this, um, surgeons are using this to connect from U.S. to Vietnam, a lot of international things. So that map of the underserved communities, you can get tech, that they ha that's the tech they have. So it works. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing to see people using our service to be able to do that at this point. So now, again, that's where we spend our time today, happier customers for us, business model and patients, you know, because that's where we want to get to, but the economic models have to work for healthcare to, to be there as well. And so intellectual property, multiple patents issued around it. Questions? So when you use Google Glass um, with your Vipar product, the reaching in was um, done through your product, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there was no overlay, right? It was just projected onto that what they were looking at. 
correct? That's what our issued patent is around, is the virtual interactive presence. So we call it merged reality, if you get mm. into the language to, to, to read on it. But I mean, whenever we were first writing the patent, it was before Billing Hurst put the 2008 paper out. So I mean, there wasn't an augmented reality to name it. So okay. we were kind of on our own at that point. Wow, that's really impressive. Other questions for Drew? One more. In the first iteration, what was the largest drawback from the, the doctor's white paper? Uh, the Google Glass, yeah, it was n normal things. Everybody knows them already. Battery life, especially whenever you're running video apps in real time. The thing that w was surprising to me, and I didn't realize it up front, is um, if everybody goes and you put your two thumbs together and, and, r and comfortably rest your hands together, this is how you want to center the field that you're going to work for eight hours a day if you're a surgeon. You want to be able to work where your arms are nice and calmly relaxed underneath, and so you're really just looking straight down the bridge of the nose, which is nowhere the camera's pointing. So that's a, that was the big, those were the two biggest. I mean, other than that, it was just trying to get on the Wi-Fi at the hospital, or not, you know. <laughs> now the irony is like, you know, you can, as long as you can pop on the, you can pop on the guest Wi-Fi at a hospital pretty easy with any device today, but you know, there was still the issue of, you know what the issues are. <laughs> we're, we're used to that here, right? All right, thank you, Drew. Yeah. I, I, I guess I should have... Uh, go for